have a couple look in the back of the bulletin, a couple of birthdays coming up this week. On Tuesday, Celia Hill has a birthday, so happy birthday to Celia. And also, uh, Sue Deirdre has a birthday on Friday, so happy birthday to her. So let's say happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, also, church conference is uh, happening today, and that's from 5 to 7. And that will be at the First United Methodist Church in Logansport. And uh, so there are some of us leaving from um, Nyman about 3 o'clock. We will to estimate time is. So if somebody would like to ride or go. You're more than welcome. And uh, we defeat the pig. Um, we don't have anything for this month, so if somebody has a suggestion, or we'll postpone that till next week. Um, Carol, do you know how much was there last week? Two hundred dollars even. So um, last week, so or last month. So thank you for that, and that will go for the Christmas boxes um, in. Uh, the Mountain United Methodist Church. Um, and I did hear from somebody, I don't remember where it was, that they uh, started um, planning for that, uh, getting ready to pack that. So, um, so no suggestions for this month. So think about it and we'll bring it up next month, do, next week. Do we usually get for the food pantry the milk or not? That's usually Oh, yeah, we bought the hands before or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to make a suggestion here? Uh, Carol or Karen? I make a suggestion then that we buy meat. All right, we do the turkey hands or, or hands. Hands. Yeah. for the food pantry um, for the month of November. And maybe go ahead for the December, the uh, um, sorrowful mother for the milk for uh, next year. We uh, set a second. Carol? Sure. All right, Darren and Carol, all in favor say aye. Opposed? Aye. Right. No date. So, and I didn't hear you if you watched it. Um, so yeah, we'll do that for the month of November and also uh, December. Um, let's see if we can go. So uh, let's have a word of prayer and we'll close the call for Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessing of each and every day that we are able to come and praise our God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to not only just praise you and hear the scriptures and the message you have for us, but we thank you for the opportunity to sing the songs that uh, they glorify you. So, Father, we are truly grateful to be here in the house of the Lord. And we are truly grateful to be in the presence of our God. So, Father, today we continue on our, our series of face-to-face. -face, and uh, just seeing the reactions of those who come face-to-face -face with Jesus and taking those messages that we have through that and just kind of allowing ourselves to look at it examine our lives and, and what it would be like for us to be face to face with Jesus in these situations. So Father, we thank you and praise you. We ask you, Lord, may the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us so that we can uh, receive your message as you have intended us to hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go together. If you are tired, if you are hungry, come and worship. If you are filled with joy, come and worship. If your spirit feels renewed, come and worship. Our God desires our worship. Whether we have much or little to give. There is healing when we come before our God. All who are gathered here, come and worship. Our opening hymn is 702, and it's sing with all the saints of glory. And you can see right below that it's sung to the tune of joyful, joyful, be it or be. So it's like some good words in there. So
kind of tell that uh, you know the scripture might is about the resurrection today, and uh, I'm not really. I don't want to say that it's about the resurrection. I can't ask the other way here. She says, "How do you feel about the sermon?" I said, "I won't know until we read the text and go to dining and you tell me." And so, <laughs> and so usually I kind of judge it by that. But and she said, "No, but how do you feel?"
as today we pray to go face to face with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So now as we get to our time of prayer, do you have any joy and concern to share this morning? Bobby, Debbie, and Peggy. John and Melita. John and Melita. How do you like it? Uh, I haven't seen him since last Sunday, but he's doing better. I don't know if he's doing basketball practice. Yeah. And he said he was still in pain when he jumped. So he's in the same condition I am. <laughs> <laughs> if I jump, I'm in pain. So. He's probably going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it happening. Eric? Eric? Rhonda, Loretta, Ronnie, and Bart? Oh, Karen and Roman and Loretta watching? Oh, hi, Karen. Hi, Loretta. Also, I want to share with all of you uh, this weekend with and uh, seen Dorothy Jungles, uh, she's been, uh, they removed the feeding tube and it's been taken to Addison Point and uh, she's under hospice care. And uh, so Dorothy is, um, we had a good conversation. Um, she responded very well and um, but, uh, um, just I think Larry's passing has just been too much for her. And, uh, um, so, taking care of her and, and so she hasn't eaten much so I want to keep more of the jungles in with her. Continue first for our nation, elected officials, law enforcement, first responders, armed forces, healthcare workers, caregivers, all those affected by illness, safe travel, for those on the road, all churches, all those affected by war, violence, flooding, other natural disasters, teachers, administration, support staff, students, and all of God's children. Prayers for this Tuesday at the uh, election polls for everyone. And uh, that's all right. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning for the blessing of being able to lift up to you and the concerns of our hearts this morning. We're thankful to have Karen and Loretta joining with us this morning, and we are thankful for this body of Christ that is gathered here in the church. Father, we continue to lift up those um, who were mentioned to you, and Father, we already know and trust that you are there in each one of those situations. Father, we continue to lift up our military men and women, men and women, those overseas and those here at home. We continue to lift up those who are struggling in their homes. But also in the, in the world today, uh, Father, there's great struggle, there's great unrest in uh, the world in which we live in. So, Father, we um, pray for that, that moment that, of, of time where we come together as Christians and uh, people of Christ and, and this celebration of the one in who we serve. But also, Father, we just uh, know that there is deep unrest within the hearts of us. Um, not just Americans, but all over the world. And so, Father, we thank you for this time to lift up in prayer our family and friends and loved ones. Father, we continue to lift up our law enforcement officers, our first responders. Uh, we lift up those who are at work within our schools and lift up the students. And just we lift up all churches for that, to take that step in helping our, our youth to get through some very difficult times in their lives as well. Father, the youth of our world has really got some heavy struggling um, going on within their life. And so, Father, we pray that, that we can be an influence on their life and help them through that struggle to be able to find different ways to, to make it through and to grow in uh, whatever adversity they face. Father, we thank you for this time together as the people of Christ come together in, in this body. We pray that you hear the prayer that you you taught us to pray, and in one voice in which we intend. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 
trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture lesson for today comes from uh, continuing in the book of, of Luke, and uh, this the series that we've been going through, face to face with Jesus, and we're looking at four different um, people or groups of people that went um, face to face with Jesus, and, and kind of learning from that experience last week with Zacchaeus, and uh, how he was happy that Jesus was coming back to his house. But the, the group that he's um, face going face to face with today is the Sadducees, and uh, this is not such a happy group to, to go against. Go up against Jesus. So uh, let's hear the word of the Lord for us this morning. Uh, Luke chapter 20, verses 27 to uh, 38. Some Sadducees, those who, were, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, the first married, and died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And so on, in the same way, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Those who belong to the, this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore, because they are like angels and children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed the story about the bush. Through, in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as God of Abraham and God of Isaac and God of Jacob, now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all of them are alive. Father God, we thank you and praise you this morning for the opportunity to hear this passage. Father, we just pray that we can kind of get a grip on what's really um, being spoken about through the Sadducees and also through Jesus' message. And so, Father, let us hear the word of the Lord for us this morning. Let us hear that word and be just enlightened to, the, to this message that Jesus gives to the Sadducees. Father, we thank you and praise you. May your Holy Spirit be poured out upon us so that we receive the words that you have descended for us to grow in our Christian faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I think one of the, the big, bigger things that we should look at in this passage is that I see too many times that we kind of take the scriptures as face value. In other words, it depends on where we're at in our life or where we're at in whatever it may be. But I think one of the passages that, that one of the parts of the scripture that we kind of uh, jumps out at us is it's speaking about marriage. And so in this, I'm going to kind of tell you that really this has nothing to do with marriage, this passage here. So I hopefully can explain it all to you. Now if you look at this passage, there you have the Sadducees. It says some of the Sadducees come before Jesus. And it specifically says that they're the ones that do not believe in the resurrection. And so in there we have the Sadducees coming and they ask this question, and the whole purpose of the question is just to trick Jesus. They have no intention of, of hearing an answer, and they just want to kind of confuse him to the point where he has no answer to give, because they believe there is no answer. So in here, I want you to kind of look at this, this in, a, in a different kind of way. One, that there that Jesus is, they even call him teacher, Jesus is teaching a new commandment. Jesus is teaching a new way of worshiping. Jesus is teaching about a new God to them. The Sadducees, their religion or their belief doesn't go any farther than the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. So anything after that, there's nothing that they relate to. And so when we think about this, there's 
there, and when I think about this, I say that there are two different teachings or religion or uh, um, faiths, or you know, however you want to label that. I know some people think religion is a, as a, a negative. Um, I don't. But uh, um, in there, I want you to kind of just look at there's two different religions going here. One of the Sadducees, who in their faith goes no farther than the Torah, and that of the new teaching of Jesus about God. And so I began to wonder a little bit, you know, how many different religions are there in the world today? Kind of think about that. We know that there's a lot. But how many do is there? So I kind of researched it, and there was a, um, a Mary um, Fairchild, I think it was? Uh, yeah, Fairchild. And she published in March of 2022 um, a paper on how many different religions there are. And she said at the beginning part, I'm going to kind of paraphrase a lot of this, is that she said in there that there, there are some groups, meaning the um, Pew Research, it had a real long name, and I just decided to go with their previous part. So I believe their research has to do with churches, because of the Pew Research. And so it's the, under their research that she found that there, as, uh, some groups believe that there are over 4,000 different religions in the world today. And so in there, I want you to kind of hear what I kind of found the definition for religion. And, and I kind of think it goes with this. Religion can briefly be defined as a specific belief system about God or God expressed through a code of conduct, ethics, forms of worship, and ritual. Religion includes social, ethical, and ceremonial elements combined with the belief in an unseen world and often a deity. Now many religions, if not all of them by this definition, you know, um, worship a some form of some new world. We which is heaven for us, and the kingdom of God, and that of a god, or a deity, or gods. And there was God, they refer to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, our God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's the same God. And so we are a part of a religion. And there are many other religions that don't worship the same God we do, but they worship other gods, idols, that kind of thing. The sun god, or the, you know, whatever one you want to pick. And so, out of there, it says in there that 85% of the, the world worship, do, are part of some religion. And 80, 85, 95% of that 85% are contained in five different groups, five different religions. Those five, di five basic religions that much of the religion is based around is that of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism. Now those are the five that 95% that of that 85% are grouped within. The other, you know, 10%, you know, is, is, is all kinds of other different, you know, gods or religion or whatever you want to look at. So in there, there are 4,000, over 4,000 by some estimated in different religions, but the vast majority of those are contained in five. Christianity, um, Judaism, uh, Islam, uh, Buddha, Buddhism, and Hinduism. So those five contain the majority of religions. So when you sit there and think about it, there are a lot of different beliefs or deities or um, ceremonies, or all those kind of things that are involved in that. And so I want you to kind of look at this passage and today that we read out of Luke as two different religions. Not because Jesus doesn't believe in the Torah and the laws, because he, later on in the New Testament it says he was the fulfillment of the law. Not because he doesn't believe it, but because the Sadducees don't believe in anything past the book of Deuteronomy. Which leads us to the one point that is very important for us. And it says in there where the, they said to uh, Jesus, he says, he said this, um, Moses himself showed in a story about the bush 
And he got, and that's too far. That's, that's what Jesus looks like. Um, where the, uh, that was in the beginning. Some Sadducees said this, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving his wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now, I wonder, I began to wonder and think about that. Why did, where did they get that from? They're in a book of the Torah. They don't go farther than the book of Deuteronomy. So where did the Sadducees find that Moses taught us, wrote this for us? And so if you go back to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, verses 5 to, to 10, that passage that, that they're referring to goes to there. And so in there, I'm going to read a little bit for you. I don't think I'm going to read it all. But it says, when brothers reside together, the one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the deceased shall not marry, be married outside the family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go to her and take her hand in marriage, and performing and performing the duty of her husband's brother to her. And the firstborn whom she bears shall succeed the name of the deceased brother, so that his name may not be blotted out of Israel. So I want to kind of say this. When the Sadducees came in there and said that uh, this, this woman's husband died, and it was his brother, that he had to marry her, and then carry on the name, if you go back to the book of Deuteronomy, has nothing to do with the marriage. If you go back to the book of Deuteronomy and why that law was passed, is because we're much past the exodus of the, 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 the uh, Israelites out of Egypt. So we're past that, and we're getting close to the end where they're going in, thinking Moses didn't make it into the land of Canaan, the, the land of milk and honey. So Moses gave this law because of the fact that they were to not mix, in other words, with others. They were to keep their legacy. They were to keep their, their heritage alive. In other words, the, the critical thing that Moses spoke about and was spoke about in the Torah is not worshiping other gods. In other words, don't intermarry because they worship other gods and you worship the God of Abraham. In other words, the fear throughout the Old Testament and the Torah is that of not because of two different cultures, or two, it's the belief that they have. Moses wanted to keep the belief in one God who is the God of Abraham Pure. And if there was, she would marry outside of the home, then there was a possibility of her marrying someone and then worshiping other gods. See, this has nothing to do with marriage. It has all everything to do with, with keeping the legacy of the family, of the Israelite. It's every bit about keeping the faith in one true God and not worshiping other deities or other gods. See, too many times you read this passage and it's all about marriage and it makes it sound like, you know, marriage is not a relationship that we have with our spouse. It, that relationship is not welcomed in the kingdom of God. And this passage has nothing to do with marriage because the Sadducees thought there was no answer to what they had to say. So Moses taught this and Jesus didn't teach against that. Jesus came up there and I loved it. Jesus liked what he does in that. In the gospel, as he, he took on the Sadducees face to face. And he said to them that, that it, and his response, I think, is, is even more important than what was going on in our passage um, there. It's because when Jesus responded to them, he said, um, and first of all, the other thing that I guess I need to make point is, is that women are treated as property back then. They weren't people, they weren't you know, needed in society. There was one part, of it, I didn't read it in there. If you go to verse 10, Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 10, you know what it says in here? If the man, and I can see this, if the man decided that he didn't want to marry his brother's wife, he just say, no, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to my sister or he didn't, I didn't want them to get married in the first place. So he, they, he doesn't have to, but if he 
doesn't, if you read verse 10 in, in 25, chapter 25, if you read in there, he has said, the woman will go before the council, and they will call in his brother, they will call him before the council, and if he says, no, I, don't, I didn't want them to get married anyway, so I didn't want to, I'm not marrying her because I have no desire for her, so I'm not marrying her. And what she is to do then is she is to go to him and pull his sandal off his foot and slap him with his sandal and spit on him. Yeah, exactly. But you know what's wrong with that in, the, in that culture, in that society? Is that he is labeled, and it says right there in verse 10, he is labeled from that time on the man who was slapped with his sandal. In other words, he is degraded because he did not carry on the legacy of his family. He didn't carry on the legacy and the heritage of his family and his brother. And that was turned against him, and I agree with you. So praise her. Finally, the woman got to do something, and everybody didn't jump down her throat. But she was treated as property. So you see the, the significance in looking at the New Testament and Jesus' response today. Jesus' response is that of she is not property. Your, spouse, your brother's spouse is not property. No one is property. Because he says, all are children of God. He is not the God of the dead. Because no one, when they come into the kingdom of God, is going to die again. So he is not the God of the dead, but he is the God of the living. So in other words, he's telling him, and he goes back to that of Moses. He said, Moses himself showed him the story of the burning bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham. This is the same God that the Sadducees are worshiping. The same God that is, is the one that Jesus is speaking about. The same God is the God of the, the children of, of, of the living. In other words, they're not going to die. There's no legacy to carry on. There's no heritage to carry on that it speaks about in the book of Deuteronomy. None of that happens because they are all children of God when they come into the kingdom. And they are like angels. And they're never going to die again. You see Jesus' point here? What I am teaching you came from the God of Abraham, the same God that you worship. He's trying to get them to go beyond the, the, the Torah. See the new uh, law, the new, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself, or as I have loved you. This is far beyond. And I've got news for you. In the Old Testament, it says those same things. It's not just a New Testament teaching. It says that same thing too many times. We read it face value, or we see the war and destruction and the hatred children being killed and all this kind of stuff. But in this Old Testament it says that same thing. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor. All those things are still in there. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law of the Old Testament. That's what he's speaking about. What he's trying to take them from is this, this, this women are property. This, this carrying on your, the heritage of your brother or the heritage is that, that we need to intermingle. This is my opinion. We need to intermingle with others. Jesus was not afraid to go face to face with the Sadducees. But the problem with the Sadducees also is much like Zacchaeus, although they are two different. Zacchaeus was rich. Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. But Zacchaeus was different because when Jesus said, I'm going to your house, he was happy. He welcomed him. Sadducees, not so much. He goes before the Sadducees and he explains to them in a, in a way that, that, that we both serve the same God. I serve. Moses spoke of the Lord, the God of Abraham, the same God you speak of, the God of Isaac, the God of Saint, Saint Jacob. This is the same God. But the problem with the Sadducees is they didn't want to believe in the resurrection. Why didn't, you want to, why didn't they want to believe in the resurrection? Because they were rich. 
because they believed that God had blessed their life here on earth and gave them the riches and the wealth and everything that they had. They didn't want any part of the, the resurrection. Because God has blessed me here. He has given me everything that I need. That's why they couldn't make that step forward into the resurrection. At least a portion. At least what I think. Because they were blessed. And I don't think that's too far from the society in which we live in today. There are many out there who believe God has blessed me with these things. And their big concern with their life is passing that legacy on through their children. But God is saying to us that there is something greater in the kingdom of God. There is something more in the kingdom of God. And if you think that the blessings that you have today here on this earth, if you think they even compare to God's kingdom, then I think you've mistaken what God has promised to all of us. You can't think of it in face value that it'll be the riches, it'll be you know fancy cars, big homes. I think we get lost in the streets of gold and all that. That's that's just describing in, in earthly terms how great the kingdom of God is. Do you know, I believe that the kingdom of God is, you know, when we get there, that we're going to be walking down a gold road and, uh, you know, pearls and gems and all that? Absolutely not. But I think the kingdom of God is going to be so much greater than our earthly mind can comprehend. And I think that's exactly what this is because the priest and the, the, the rich and all those at that time, you know, that culture, they had those houses of gold. Everything was lined with gold and, and marble and just extravagant homes while the poor just sat out there with nothing and begging for just the scraps that fell off the table of those people. I think the right mindset for we as people of God and Christians and followers of the God of Abraham and the teachings of Jesus Christ. And what we see is that yes, my life has been blessed by God here on this earth. But these earthly blessings do not even compare to coming into his kingdom. To being in a relationship with him. Being in a relationship with your past family and friends and loved ones. See, I really believe long time ago when we started this question and answer, it came up about marriage. And I believe that God has blessed my life through relationships. Not just with Anne, but with all of you. And I think coming into God's kingdom, that those same relationships will carry on. I think the teaching here is to get beyond our legacy, get beyond the, the things of this earth, the things that we have here today and, and of this world. And to understand that what God is saying here is that He is the God of the living. There is no more dying. There is no need to carry on your legacy through children or riches or whatever it may be. That's all earthly things. But we need, we need to focus on is that of the heavenly thing. The kingdom of God. Something much greater than anything we could ever possess here. Take the richest person. Very charitable. Giving to those in need. Doing whatever they need to do or feel called by God to do. And it still doesn't compare in coming into God's kingdom. And maybe coming face to face. As much the reason we sang that song with the saints who have gone before us. I've said often, who are the saints? Yes, we can think of all the different saints in the scriptures and, and, and religion and different, all that kind of, We can think of all that, but I think of that as those who led me to God. Those who have gone before me. Those who have already entered God's kingdom. Tonight, 
I point through all of this. The Sadducees had everything and nothing. In other words, they couldn't get beyond that one, the, the, the book of Deuteronomy. They couldn't get beyond the Torah. They didn't want to hear Jesus. All they wanted to do was ridicule him. All they wanted to do was humiliate him in front of all those people. They didn't think there was an answer. But I think Jesus answered very clearly. Take it beyond marriage. Take it beyond your legacy. Take it beyond your children. And focus on the one true God. When Jesus went up on the mountain and prayed for those apostles, who they would be. And it was revealed to him. I think that same thing happens for us. Jesus goes up on that mountain in the kingdom of God and he prays for us daily. Those who have chosen to go out into the world, into the community, and share the message of Jesus Christ. You have been chosen as disciples of Christ, bringing the message of the world. The message isn't about relationships, marriage, about resurrection, about something much greater. And Jesus leads us with that greater. Love the Lord your God, and love your neighbor as yourself, for as I have loved Jesus. Love, love, love. As God the Father has loved you. God has chosen you and me and others to share the message of the gospel.
Let us be a, a, a right heart this morning. Feeling the very presence of God through the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Let us open our hearts to the glory of our God and to receive his message for us this morning. And you have been invited by Christ this morning to come and partake of Holy Communion. Come in your brokenness. Come in your humble state of mind. Come knowing that the strength of God leads you to the table that Christ has set. Come and feel the presence of our Christ today through Holy Communion. Come.
that was going to be a great visual right there. When we all get to heaven and the gates just come flying open, and not just that you're going to see Jesus standing there, but all the saints, everybody that's gone before him, and the kingdom of God, what a place of rejoicing that's going to be. And so I think in there, let us be inspired by that vision of those who have gone before us, the vision of coming into the kingdom and seeing them face to face again. What a place of rejoicing. Because of the promise of the resurrection, which the Sadducees did not believe. Because of that, we will receive and we will rejoice.